evidence. You don't want to contaminate. You need that evidence. And that includes damaging the evidence, not just contaminating contaminating it, but damaging it. Um, let's say glass. Glass is a form of evidence. You don't want to put it into a container uh, where it'll shatter. Sometimes you need glass in a specific um, cracked a certain way. For example, you want to match it. Let's say the, 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 the suspect has some glass on them. You have glass at the crime scene. The suspect says, I was never there. If you can match your glass to the glass that the, that the suspect has, well, that's great. You've um, shown something about the, the crime. Uh, but if you're the glass you have from the crime scene shattered, uh, you can't do that. So take care of your evidence. Make sure it doesn't break. Sometimes, you know, in the case of arson, they uh, used gasoline to make the fire go faster. Well, if you don't keep this uh, this evidence in, so you have like a wood that might have absorbed some of the gasoline. If you don't keep that in an airtight container, it'll evaporate. And when you get to get to the crime lab, they're not going to find any gasoline because it all evaporated. Make sure you know what how to collect the evidence and be careful with it. Make sure you collect it in a way that it will not be ruined. Uh, the, do not touch with your hands. Use gloves, tweezers, forceps, uh, whatever it is. Try not to contaminate or break it. Uh, so, and usually, the entire object has to be taken if possible. Uh, let's say there's, um, uh, there, let's say there's a shirt that may have hair or fiber on it as evidence. Take the whole shirt. Don't just take the fiber from the shirt. Take the whole shirt. Sometimes there's a stain. Don't just uh, try to swab the stain and get the DNA out of it. Take the entire cloth and send that to the lab. That's usually the best way to go. Sometimes it's impossible. Um, let's say it's on uh, the wall of the house. You're not going to remove the entire wall. But if possible, take the entire object. So uh, it's not just in collecting the evidence and handling it. It's in packaging it. So, and there are different kinds of packages for different kinds of evidence. Just a little, you know, here's some examples of different kinds of packages for different kinds of evidence. Some will require airtight seals like arson evidence, and some of them require air drying, and they should not be airtight, because uh, if you have biological evidence, for example, they can, mold can grow on them, bacteria can grow on them if they're not dry. So they have to be air dried, and um, if you keep them in a very nicely sealed thing, bacteria will grow and destroy the DNA and destroy your biological evidence. So often, Ordinary evidence, you can't put in ordinary envelopes because they can leak out the corners. Envelopes are not, things can leak out. So one of the popular popular methods is to use what they call the druggist's fold. You have evidence, let's say, um, uh, some soil that you don't, that may have biological evidence on it. Let's say bloodstained soil or something like that. You want it to be able to be aired out, but you don't want it to slip out. Uh, you put it in, in an envelope, it can slip out. Some evidence, uh, some of them are designed to keep them. But uh, what you can do is take a piece of paper, divide it into three parts, you know, put the evidence on it, divide it into three parts, then fold, fold into three parts, then fold those ends into three parts and stuff one end into the other over here. That's what they call the druggist fold. You can try it yourself if you ever have to, you know, you're ever in a, your own little, you know, Ikea uh you know, project and you have screws all over the place and you want to keep them confined in one place, you can use the druggist fold for yourself. You know, I've done it myself when I've had things I don't want spread out. I fold them in a piece of paper and keep them around. Anyway, that's the druggist fold and that's what you should do if you have no other way to to uh, store or keep the evidence for transfer. You can use that for biological evidence. It airs out, it's not sealed, but it also does not let any uh, biological evidence out. And remember, no, with the, what with DNA evidence, we, uh, we have to deal with that, too. It's very important, and we have to find ways of dealing with that. And we must mention that don't, you know, wear gloves. Don't cough on it. Don't sneeze anywhere near it, because your DNA will get, you know, into uh, the, possibly the perpetrators, and they're going to start thinking that you did it. Uh, you don't want that to happen. So just don't sneeze. Don't cough on it. Sometimes... Evidence is a biohazard. I mean, it might be a, it might be, let's say, bodily fluids from the perpetrator. But hey, he's a criminal. He might be infected by something really contagious. You don't want to touch it. So be careful. The evidence might be a biohazard. Here's some examples. Here's the arson evidence. Remember, we mentioned that uh, we don't want gasoline to evaporate. 
See, these are paint cans. They are seal. They seal. It's as airtight. Uh, there's a little thing on the top, and uh, we might be able to show a little bit more about why there's that thing. But uh, anyway, uh, here's uh, notice that it, it would seal. Here's a paper bag. It's not airtight. It's not designed to be. Um, there are things that you have to write down as to who collected it and when and how. Here's like the chain uh, chain of possession. Let's see if we can uh, magnify that. Because, let's say, one person has it and they transfer it to another person. Everyone's got to write down what they had and when and what they, why they had it and maybe what their results were. Um, because if you find that someone took it and didn't mention anything, well, bad procedure means the lawyers are going to say, you're covering things up. And we don't want to have that. We want to do things correctly where there's no question. This thing is, uh, is uh, here's we have um, well, a container for bullets. And uh, here we have a box for, let's say, all the bigger pieces of evidence. Who knows? Um, might uh, put a lot of things in there. Uh, let's blow this up and you'll see something interesting that's on the box. You can read this carefully. It says chain of custody. That's very, very important. The one who picked it up, he doesn't keep it. He sends it to the lab. But he might go through his various different people. And the laboratory personnel, they might send it from one lab to another. The chain of custody is basically a list of people who have had contact and control of this evidence. You must have a chain of custody. You do not want to ever have a time that the evidence was somewhere and no one was in charge of it, or no one knows who was in charge of it, no one knows where it might have been. You must, there's a from, a time from, time to, you know, uh, again, it's hard to read, but that's the chain of custody, where you know who had the evidence and when and where it went from that person. It's got to be known from the time it was collected until it shows up in court. Okay. So, um, there are hazards. We mentioned the biohazard, where it might be, it might be infectious. Um, make sure to wear on, make sure, and there's sharp objects also. Needles, for example, in drug cases or knives. Eye protection. You know, so you never know if uh, something like sprays at you. If you're, let's say, in a drug lab, you don't know what's going on there. You, you know, uh, you know what they put in there, you know what's about to you know, uh, blast out. Uh, wear eye protection. In the chem lab, uh, those of you who have been in a chemistry laboratory, you know uh, the one of the first rules is must wear goggles. It's in fact the New York State law. If you ever go into a chemistry laboratory, you have to wear goggles. Must wear eye protection. Uh, as I tell students, uh, the flesh that gets dissolved off of your bones will grow back, but your eyes, if they get burned through by chemicals, they will not grow back. So. When you're examining evidence, make sure to wear eye protection. So sometimes if it's a really life-threatening disease, I mean, someone might have been working on some kind of uh, bioterrorist uh, uh, weapon. This thing, you might need an entire bio, an entire protective suit. Depends on what's going on. People make bombs. Sometimes you have to uh, worry about those. And uh, even after the investigation is over and uh, the court case is over, so uh, the laboratory is ready to throw out their stuff. Be careful. If it's a biohazard, there are ways of destroying biohazards. Don't just throw them in the garbage so someone else can get can get sick. Um, you there are certain protocols on how to get rid of biohazards. Some chemical hazards you don't want to contaminate uh, or pollute whatever you're going to put the chemical waste in. There are ways of destroying it. Make sure that when you're done. Uh, make